overdue, y'all. Oh hell yeah. This been this been needed to have. Yeah, this is really overdue. Yeah, yeah. All right, we here, man. All the way to going live. Okay. Hey, yo, man. What, 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 what we on? What episode is this? Forty three. Okay. Yeah. First off, time out. Hey, say, man. Uh, oh, let's give a special shout out to the homie Simmons, man. He in the hospital right now. You know what I'm saying? But this is episode forty three. You know what I'm saying? Light a blunt, take a shot for Simmons. You know what I'm saying? Always going live. You niggas can't catch up because what? We always gone. You know what I'm saying? So. uh who we got in the building we today, Mott? We got in the building. Who we got in the building in today, Mott? NQA Management. Who we here with? Okay, okay. NQA Management and Media, the one and only. Yes, sir. Big gang. Yeah. H. Palmer. Yes, uh, sir. CEO, A&R extraordinaire, manager, executive, executive producer, all that good shit. Uh, going on my 25th project in the last five years. Yeah. So... I'm like, I'm walking into something a little different. Yeah, I'm yeah. actually taking a enjoying the process. Like year this year, I'm going on year five, and I can say like I didn't get a chance to enjoy the process. Okay. In the beginning. Okay. Because everything happened so fast. Like every like most people like when I started, the success that I saw was early, like quick. Like niggas spend their whole life getting the artist signed. Like when I got Shelly signed, I did okay. that within a year of starting my company. Everything happened quick. I got double signed within like 15 months. Shelly from Shelly C. Shelly Flame. Oh, Shelly. Oh, Shelly Flame. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Okay. 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 I got All right. a baby grand. And Damn. then I backed up like three, four months later. Then I got double signed. Okay. And then I got Birdhouse, his deal with baby grand. Then they ended up giving us a joint venture deal. Okay. So we on the second. If you notice, you've been seeing a lot of content from Double Lately. Yeah. We on the second round of that. So we spending the block. We, we getting ready to come back with the Double O Records and we get ready to get. Launching him off of shit, so it's <laughs> our shit with Sony and Baby Grand getting mm. back into play. <laughs> then of course I got NQA, of course, my <laughs> a regular management distribution okay. company. Uh, I got my first deal with them in 2020. I got my first deal with uh, EQ Distro, Equity Distribution. That's mm. um, Rock Nation subsidiary, okay. like independent. Wow. And then uh, there, this year I just closed the deal with Vidya through Gamble. You know, Rick Ross, mm. Usher. Meek Mill, all of them just all went that to them. Thing. Yeah, yeah. I, so I, I just did it. I just closed the distribution deal with them. Like they saw me out. Like they hit me up and was like, "Hey, we coming to Austin, South by Southwest. We want to link with you. We want to fuck with you." Okay. And I went, <coughs> and it went from there. Met with Sean Maxson, gave me the deal. He was like, "Yo, you got this potential for this and growth. I own all my masters, everything. Like, bro, the deal, uh, eighty twenty." Beautiful, like shit. I got uh, room for advance money, all types of shit. This is all based off the artists and how hard they working. You know what I'm saying? So, uh, I just be doing every. Like, I just do everything. It's more so. I'm more so focused on management, artist development. Mm. I do showcasing. Uh, e I make EPKs. I do mm. all that dope shit. One sheets, all that shit, just to get artists more exposure, to get yeah. them more acclimated. Because a lot of these artists, they don't know the business. What's up? Damn, what's up? I seen you was like at Empire the other day. What's that? Oh, I was about basically, to drop that. basically, uh, I should I shouldn't have said that. Oh no, no, you good? No, okay. This is knowledge. Um, my homeboy plugged me in with him. He plugged me in with Gold Toes and a couple of other guys in the building, and then it just went from like, all right, you you over here in Texas and you from Chicago. No, I'm about to just ask you that. You got that? You know where to go and how to move like believe it or not a lot of executives i see that's right a lot of executives or a lot of people they don't like going to the hood they don't like necessarily fucking with niggas mm -hmm. or going to showcase you know what i'm saying like they ain't going in the, in the trenches and going yeah yeah, yeah like a small niggas. town they go, get, shit. they go get niggas to find them niggas mm -hmm. it's niggas they get to find them niggas and that's why i come in there like they what they do is they have meetings and they fly niggas out and they they invite you out and what they do is they have niggas at the table they put people on the screen and they literally like they give you 10 or 15 minutes sometimes 20 to just play all the artists you want or you may have info on wow and it gives them a chance to get educated on what's out there like believe it or not these these labels like departments they got departments they can tell who fake streaming they can tell yeah. who got fake views who got fake followers mm. all that they got they got anti pisan Smileware and shit. They know they can look. They can scan that shit. They I can think see. I see you talking about that. Yeah, they can see that shit. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm talking about like I'm in the office. I'm walking past, and then they got a whole room just dedicated to just 
at piracy, anti-piracy. Just wow. seeing niggas who buy screens from like digital labels and shit like that. Mm. It's really that. And there's a lot of niggas that be doing that shit. They just don't. That's why they don't ever get looked at. Mm. They be looking like how I got a million streams or how I got five hundred thousand, and I play on my numbers because they know how to look. They can see you got. Okay, you might do a project where you got like a crazy like half a million streams, right? Mm -hmm. But they look at your Spotify listeners, you only got like eighteen hundred. They know they know that they organic because you gotta actually you and then and then if you buy them, what they do is they go they don't last, they go away. What you mean by buy them? What's like that? you can buy followers, buy followers views, plays, mm -hmm. you can buy all that shit. Once you, you buy all that shit, right. and depending on yeah. how strong the malware that the people that sell it to you got it for. It can last for a long, long time, time. Yeah. but if it's not and it's just a quick bump, a quick fix, it's gonna go away. It's gonna go away. Like the next month, it's gonna right. go away. Oh, if it is, it's gonna go away. Like a lot when of you, when you say go away, you mean like uh, like you're, you're not gonna have those same numbers the next nah, month. Nah, you look up. You know how you be seeing some motherfuckers Instagram? They have like twenty seven thousand followers. Yeah. Then you look up the next month, they be back down to like eight thousand and mm. shit. When you look up, they be down to like twelve thousand. Yeah. They done bought them followers. They didn't, they didn't they didn't get traffic that stick or actual impressions. When you look at a motherfucking impressions, a motherfucker had thir like me, I got thirteen thousand followers. Mm. It's weird about somebody having maybe a certain like twenty thousand followers and you only got like four thousand impressions. Like, yeah, I got yeah. thirteen thousand, I got forty seven thousand impressions. Mm. So it's just knowing the algorithms and the numbers. Yeah. And the labels. Look at that shit. If you don't got content like <coughs> We live in a day and age where social media is king, bro. Mm -hmm. So, if you're not dropping tri TikToks, trailers, reels, man, nobody give they don't give a fuck about Instagram, Facebook. No. Facebook is the people you know. Five thousand of them people is guaranteed they know you. Mm -hmm. The people that follow you, they come after. If you notice, motherfuckers that had like six thousand followers, mm -hmm. they had six K one and all that other mm -hmm. shit. Five thousand of that is they maximum of their friend list. So they only, in reality, only got 1,000 followers. Mm. Instagram don't mean shit. Instagram don't mean shit. I mean, not Instagram. Facebook. Facebook don't mean shit. Facebook is just the people that know you already. Okay. And, and if they know you rap, what stopped them from what, what stopped them from being supporting you? Yeah. What stopped them from being streaming your shit? Yeah. If you got five, then even then, that's questionable. Because think about Facebook. Motherfuckers done died. Mm. You ain't, how many people really clean out their Facebook page? So you really don't got 5,000 followers. You really got about 4,800 or maybe 4,300. Mm. Mm, so it's knowing the mm. numbers and knowing the analytics. Like, what's what's the new mixtape? Motherfuckers hate it. It's playlisting. That's the new mixtape. That's the new DJ K Slate. That's the Playlist. new. That's the new DJ Khaled. That's the new DJ Sycamore. That's the new. That's the new. I, I'm 35. Mm -hmm. I come from the era of the mixtapes. Yeah. I seen 50 Cent is the future. Yeah. I seen the, the Rockefeller mixtapes. I seen the S. Dot Carter collection. Mm -hmm. I come from that. Mm -hmm. I'm a music nigga. Yeah. You feel me? Yeah. So today in today's age, right now, the hottest thing out right now is playlisting. And I'm not saying it because I do it. I'm saying it because man, that's the artists got. They want to know exposure. Fuck with these niggas that's doing playlists and they got platforms because that's the new mixtape. The new mixtape DJs is the influencers, the niggas that's on social media doing the shit. Mm, okay, I'll be seeing that. Is like, that's the new influencer? Like, that's the new that's the new mixtape DJ. The new mixtape is the playlist curator. That's the new mixtape DJ. I've seen niggas get signed off niggas like bro. One of my artists, he uh, went to the military, all that. He used to be my artist, Dino. One time, bro. Okay. Like my uh, yeah. his first, his first major single, uh, Twenty One Summers. Like that shit got picked up by Rap Radar for title. He ended, he ended up getting a stupid bag off that, just that one single because it was just the playlist, and that was through just what EQ Distro. What so it's just that? fuck with the playlist, and it means a lot. It means a lot. It helps. I'm I'm telling you, playlisting, actually promoting yourself and shit like that. Like for me, I'm an A and R, and I used to rap when I was younger. Like you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Like I like I me personally, I I could never see myself doing that shit again because I like where I'm at. It's yeah, comfortable. Yeah. yeah, yeah. It's comfortable as fuck. Like I have no desire to do that. Like I like seeing other people and curating talent. I'm really into the art of actually building artists like mm -hmm. i like listening to samples i like i listen to 90s music 
Mm-hmm. Like I really don't like I don't get me wrong. Yeah. I got my new nigga bunch I listen to, of okay. course. But I'm Jay Z, Nas. I listen to Poor Righteous Teachers. You oh, feel okay. what I'm saying? Okay. Yeah. I'm that type of nigga. I'm a five percent, so uh, you know what I'm saying? Peace mm-hmm. God, power, cipher, divine, you feel me? So yeah, I come from C Medina. Like I'm a five percent of nation of gods of earth. Okay. So, you know what I'm saying? Like I'm cultured. Yeah. So it's like I don't just listen to just drill music mm-hmm. or none of that shit. Like I listen to Real music, yeah. Drew the Damage, a gang star. I come from that. Like okay. I listen to boom bap hip hop. Okay. Mike Geronimo. Yeah, like, yeah, I fuck yeah. with shit like that. Like I'm mm. really into the culture. Mm. Like I listen to music. I don't just man, I listen to but West Coast, above the law. I listen to old shit. Okay. I okay. got an old spirit. Like I listen to OG music. Like really, music lost me after really like 2007, 2008. I I for real. Like you might catch me jamming, you might catch me jamming uh blueprint. You might catch me jamming blueprint one before you catch me jamming some new shit. That's when Nas said hip hop was dead. I think. Yeah, like you won't really you catch me. I still jam Nostradamus. Like I, you know what I'm saying? I'm a music. I'm I come from the school of Quincy Jones. Mm-hmm. So it's like I just I knew I wanted to do what he do. I knew like I never mm-hmm. seen him play an instrument, but I knew he could orchestrate. Pub Daddy, the hitman, like that's the, the pedigree of like what I go along the line of when I work with producers mm. and stuff like that. So Quincy could play. I'm a mean, you say what? Quincy could play. Yeah. And the, I he can play the trumpet. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like anybody who know me, I can play piano, cello, yeah. saxophone. Wait, what? The cello, yeah. Yeah. It's a known fact. Like I play instruments. My mama tell you I play instruments. I've been playing instruments since I was eight. Wow. Yeah, like then nobody teach me just being what? in the projects, just sitting around niggas. Just going downtown on the train. Like, I'm yeah. from Chicago. Okay. So I used to go downtown uh-huh. and see niggas play. And when you see them play, you just sit and you just watch and you see what chords they hit, how they get a reaction out of the crowd. And then I'm a fan of music. Yeah. So I listen to Jimi Hendrix, Leonard Skinner, Yannis Joplin, Trent Reznor, Nine Inch Nails. I'm a music, yeah. an oasis of music. Like, yeah. I tell people, like, when you Everything. talk to me, it ain't just like, oh, yeah, I'm on this one genre. Mm-hmm. Like, nah, I draw inspiration from everywhere, bro. Mm-hmm. So nah, like I I feel like that's a requirement to do to be an A and R. I feel like you should know how to play at least one instrument, one. Okay. One. I can play a couple. Okay. Yeah, the flute too. Oh. Yeah, piano, <laughs> flute, saxophone, cello. So you do the orchestra. Yeah, okay. I like it. I, it, I'm a hood nigga. I just learned that shit. That's crazy. I just it's just I just had a love for the business. I tell everybody, you ain't gotta be wear a six sucker suit and have a derby or a dob to be a businessman. All you got to do is just have a wild love for the business. Like, I was going to school for information technology. When I really realized how much I love the business, I went to school for business management. Okay. And I realized, like, okay, this is what I can implement into what I do. And really, I'm just being honest with you. If if you have any entrepreneurial spirit and you come from a certain era, I come from the crack era, baby. I learned from the OGs around me how to structure a Fortune 500 business. I learned from the niggas around me how to do that. You know what I'm saying? Like, mm-hmm. I learned how to run dope lines when I was 14, 15 years old. You mm-hmm. feel what I'm saying? So it's just different. It's just, it's totally different. It's just, it's a whole different mindset. It's just being, it's just being able to, how can I say it? Being able to identify a need and attacking that source and bringing, bringing what the people need. And right around here, there's nobody that really curates talent. And that's what I do. Like, Right now, I would say with NQA, I'm at a stage of, all right, second gear. It's time to like, I want to establish us more as a, a label. Mm-hmm. So I'm more so looking for artists to like build with and really, really work with. Like, that's what I'm really focused on. Like, you know, so I'm sorry, I'm just going. No, no, hey, shit, you answer my questions. It's good. I seen you was also looking for like, you know what I'm saying? Like, like, Social media influencers and shit like that. Mm-hmm. Like, that's what you trying to like have everything working in-house basically or, like because you got to make TikToks to these songs these days yeah so shit like then, that is it go hand in hand mm. content creators need people to make content yeah. with yeah because a lot of people don't understand like there's a thin line between you actually being it's a it's, a, it's like a veil this thin in the industry from you being an actual artist and you being on the sideline and a lot of people they blur those lines and that's how they lose and that's how they lose mm. that's how they lose they uh that's how they lose their zeal. That's how they lose they uh, what would I what I would say, they appeal. Yeah, what makes them who they that are. What makes them who they are. Mm-hmm. Like the moment, like if I'm picking up a microphone, something's went extremely wrong. 
Like, it's, uh, if I got a rap, niggas is dead in jail, <laughs> and I'm the last man standing on the company type shit, and I ain't got no choice but to be rapping. Yeah. That's the only way a nigga rapping. And because if I was to do this shit, I would immediately, it, it's not fair. <clears throat> and I would immediately be successful because I know the cheat code. I know exactly what the fuck I would do for me. That's crazy. I, what I would do for any other artist, I know what I would do for me. So it wouldn't be fair to my artist. And that's, a, that's like sacrifice. Like you gotta be able to like, nah. So a lot of a lot of people that's influencers, content creators, they forget the sacrifice because the culture, like the music, is the artist. It's the artist. It's artist direct at all times. We just people in cast, role players. Like I'm not bigger than nobody. I had to. I really like as of late had to implement that to myself. Hmm. I'm not bigger than my brand. You're not like like you're not bigger than your brand, bro. Hmm. Especially if you got partners you got people that work with you work for you and yeah. subsidiaries or contemporaries you not bigger than a brand you subject to just everything else i got a partner i'm not i don't run in, i like believe it or not i'm only i own my company but i'm 50 percent i own her i have a partner yeah yeah i got a partner dominica she's my she's my chief operating officer so like i have it's structured like a business you got a ceo you got a vice president CFO. you got a yeah you got a you got a creative you got a creative manager you got all that I really want y'all to understand you don't gotta be a million dollar nigga off real you don't gotta be a 30 kilo nigga you don't gotta be a killer you don't gotta be none of that all you gotta do is really pay attention to your surroundings and the shit around you the key to the key to getting ahead and enlightening the people around you is education that's to gonna unlock all the doors. Whether it's street education, whether it's book education, get you an education, bro. Educate yourself on something sturdy. That's all you gotta do. I man, real shit. I don't even like telling this shit. Mm. I got kicked out of high school my freshman year. And it, and listen to me talk and why I'm highly educated. You would never know. You would, you would never know. know. Mm -mm. You would never know I got my GED when I was 19. You would never know that shit. I've always had a highly extensive vocabulary. It's self-educating. Mm -hmm. It's me reading encyclopedias. It's mm -hmm. me reading Britannica. Mm -hmm. I'm nine and ten coming home from school. I'm at grandma crib. You feel That's me? That's all you had to read. That's all I had to read with the motherfucking plastic couch. Yeah. So you know the old world books that your grandma had mm -hmm. with the World War Two in it and yeah. showing you about Adolf Hitler. That's how I learned about Auschwitz, the Holocaust, mm -hmm. and Frank. That's how I became cultured. I, I each one to itself, the prison of his ghettos. What was around me? That's what molded me to be the person I am. Wow. I had great influences. They weren't the best, mm. but they were great influences. These are the gems. Like. I just I just picked up on the, the best shit I could. The best shit I could. That's how I got here. All this is no no diploma, no nothing. Nobody wow. didn't teach me this shit. I had to learn this shit either trial by error or just knowing like, bruh, that's what I want to do. And all you have to really be is a sponge. Just be a sponge. Sit around people. Listen. God gave you two ears and one mouth for a reason. Put the cotton in your mouth and stick it. Now take the cotton out your mouth mm -hmm. and stick it in your ear. Mm -hmm. I mean, take the cotton out your ears and mm -hmm. stick it in your mouth. Mm -hmm. yeah, bro, I never heard that one. yeah, take the cotton out your ears and stick it in your mouth. You might learn something. You might bite your teeth on something. That's yeah. the game, though. I fuck with you. This is crazy. No, I fuck. Okay, so what kind of got you from, like, Chicago to here, though? Like, is it, like, a certain decision that you made? Oh, no, nah, it was, it was the... the the best worst decision I ever made. Okay. Yeah, I was in jail. I was in. The, I, I was in jail. Okay. Sitting in jail, attempted murder, whatever. It was my first major charge. I was Eighteen going on nineteen. Oh, this was back in two thousand and six. During this time, if you were a military kid or you in the military, or you was in the military, y'all would know America was getting their ass whipped. Mm. Like Iraq was IED crazy. Yeah. They was looking for bodies. Like they needed bodies. Back in 05, 06, the initial invasion of Iraq, yeah. 03, 04, 05, them niggas needed bodies. They was giving niggas twenty thousand dollars for leaving in two like for leaving in two months to go to basic. Because they found out that white boys could no longer defend America. Wait, what the fuck Facts. are you talking about? Hey, white yeah. boys because Wait, that's white what they recruiting people from prison? No, from yeah, white? Hold on, hold on. Hell hold on, hold on. Yeah. White boys can no longer defend America. This is fact. White boys don't know urban warfare. They only know mm, open America's field like, mm -hmm. warfare. Yeah, they snipers. Can. 
and shooting you from a distance. Oh, they know how to do that. Crazy, they don't know how to do kick doors. They don't know how to go they into neighborhoods had, had, to break down to projects. Shit, yeah, shit so like they went and got niggas in Mexicans. We was kids. Yeah, they got niggas in Mexicans with tattoos. And shit. Yeah, they me? couldn't do that we shit. We get into one of the we get into with vice lords and shit. You yeah, feel boy, me? This the urban warfare. I come from the project. They literally was like back. Man, this is no cap. Like motherfuckers watching, they be like, yeah. But they was coming to the, they was going to Cook County Jail. Wow. They was going to like inner cities, New York, Rikers Island, all LA. over. They was to L.A. And they was all, they was getting people that had their first, first offenses. Mm -hmm. You didn't like your first major offense. Like you didn't have to be like, you just was a kid that fucked up. Mm -hmm. There was a program called Green to Go. I mean, uh, Orange to Green. Orange to Green, you had to complete one enlistment. And they would drop the, they would drop the case. And you was off, a, you was on off a Jew, whatever the fuck. Yeah, probation. No probation and shit. No probation, yeah. all that shit. But you had to go, you had to go and delay entry What's that, program. Three years. Yep, three okay. years, okay. or however many years. But your first one on list me. Mm -hmm. I did a three piece, and I just so happened to re-enlist over there because they was offering money. Man, they gave me twenty five thousand dollars. Out of jail. Out of jail. Bonus. Went to basic, completed my nine weeks. By the time I got, to, by the time I was done with basic training, my first week of IT, I had my first half of my bonus. Yeah. This shit is real. That's, but no, that's a flip though. Yeah. That shit. But she was like, fuck that. Right. I gotta get up out of jail though. Yeah. Like, yeah. like I ain't like, but looking back on that shit, knowing what I know now, like when you enlightened, mm -hmm. hell no, nah, I wish I wouldn't have had to did that shit. Mm -hmm. That shit, that shit, that shit wasn't the move. You seen some crazy shit. I seen some crazy shit. Mm -hmm. And that shit, not even just on some crazy shit, you just see, you see how the army really do black people. Oh, shit. It's racist, bro. The it's army racist. Is the Fuck. army is the harborer of the most racist it's the EO in it's, America. Bro, it's it's the largest it's the largest EO complaint, bro. Yeah. I learned every I'm from, I'm a city nigga. Like Chicago racist. Understand yeah. that. Yeah, we the most racist city, we the most racist and segregated city in the country. Mm, okay. Still, we the most segregated, excuse me. It's more so of where you live. Like I didn't see black I didn't see black and white people live amongst each other until I got to Texas. Yeah. When I was in Chicago, like that never happened. Never. Yeah. Your so, world was your world. Like it's yeah, places it's in Chicago place. you will never. White people can't even tell you about sixty <clears> third. <throat> they never mm -hmm. have to go past thirty first, mm -hmm. twenty second. Mm -hmm. They never go past the beach. It's certain niggas that have never left Inglewood. They can't tell you nowhere past Tay Town and Oak Block. Yeah, I heard that shit before. That's yeah. real shit. Yeah. It's niggas that have just imagine. There's niggas who've never left the three block radius of Oak Block, bro. Wow. It's niggas in my hood right now that can't tell you how no other part look other low end of Chicago since we've been kids. They can't even tell you how OS look because that's a different world apart. That's a whole different world. Out West niggas can't even tell you what the South Side look like. It's segregated. Then you got little pockets and neighborhoods where you got the Polish, they got they shit, mm -hmm. you got the, the white, Jews, the Jews, Puerto Rican, Irish, the Bridgeport. Man, uh, Bridgeport? Across the bridge where the White Sox play, yeah. where I'm at, where I grew up at, mm -hmm. across the bridge, that's the most white racist, that's the most richest and white racist side of town, which is ironically across yeah. the Vidoc from the pro where the projects used to be. Richard J. Daly, the mayor, used to be from there. That whole machine, that Chicago outfit machine, comes from Bridgeport, bro. Mm -hmm. So it's like, it's racist as fuck. It's systematic racism. Yeah. So I was used to that. Yeah. When I got to the army, I went used to country nigga racism. Like, I wasn't used to white boys. What's up, Moon Cricket? Whoa, I didn't know what the, the fuck, fuck that was. Mm. I didn't have no clue. And by and I was so and me 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 being me <laughs> up north racist real nigga shit. Up north racism <laughs> like everybody a nigga. A white person I hate saying like there's a white person a nigga to me. <laughs> yeah. Like, they what's are. up nigga? Yeah. Like you like I'm you get what I'm getting at? Yeah. Like yeah. she a nigga. Mm. Like, that's to me, like, that's the I slang, how we talk, what's up, G? Like, you just a regular, what's up, my nigga? You just, even if you was a white dude, what's up, nigga? Yeah. Like, that's up north, though. We not, we not, they didn't, we desensitized, and they didn't harp that on us like they did out in the south. Mm -hmm. They didn't do that to us, like, because we had our own world. Yeah, I see what you're saying. We had our own world, so there was no reason for me to ever feel offended by a white person, because they, when they saw us, they was more scared of us than we scared of them. Mm -hmm. So it never, like, and it's up north. It's systematic racism. Mm. Shit to stop you from living good. Mm. Shit to stop you from getting good jobs. Mm. Systematic racism. Out here when I got in the south, when I went to basic training in the Fort Bend. Mm. Nah, I ain't know nothing about that. When I went out with my first, after we graduated, I ain't know that certain towns were sundown towns. The real south. 
For real, South. Georgia, baby. And Georgia, I was in Georgia. I heard mm -hmm. about it. That's why when I mm -hmm. found out about it out here recently, I was like, damn, they got Sundown Towns out here? Mm -hmm. Hell yeah, they got a spot called Cut and Shoot, Texas. Vider. Vider, I all that. I before. Niggas was just explaining this shit to me. I'm like, whoa. Because I, I, I've seen that in Georgia. Yeah, I'm so, from Blakely, Georgia. Yeah, uh, they got Sundown like Towns and shit. Yeah, but it's all racist. That's what they think. Think about it. It was a racist... But what you mean Construct though? Like they was jump. calling you names and <coughs> yeah, they was they, making they, you do Black, black soldiers getting it. punished more than black, any okay, other soldiers. Okay, they I get mean. demoted more than any other so, so, soldiers. Yeah, they yeah. get every, they, they don't everything. Get promoted. Yeah, like, don't get promoted. Don't get promoted. Yeah, they're going to take know, care of so. their own for they take care of you. Yeah, bro. They oh, got to take care like, of them. Like, like you got in, in the army, it's really on some like who you know type shit. Awesome. You got to be real cool with like certain motherfuckers. It just so happened. Luckily, I had that luck of stroke of luck where I was cool. Everywhere I went, yeah, like it was like you a regular dude. Yeah. Like I, I knew early when I got in the army, like this a mind fuck. The first day I got basic training, I seen a nigga like get punched. Like they was the they was doing a shark attack. They was yelling, and you know how they yelling in yeah, these faces and shit. Mm -hmm. And it's drill sergeant. I never forget the shit. His name was Drill Sergeant Jones. No bullshit. You know how you swinging and oh get off the bus, get off the bus, ah! all that. And a little white dude popped his head up, oh, and he man. hit him. And when he hit him, he fell. And he just kept going. And I was like, oh yeah, y'all just, this is spook contest. Mm. Got it. Once I figured that out, I'm like, nigga, okay. They do all the yelling in your face. Who you think you is? Chicago? <laughs> all that other shit. Like, they just doing all that. And after they realized, like, all right, you cool. Yeah, you yeah, got a box yeah, to you, dude. Yeah, yeah. Well, ain't no point even just, I, like, if I got smoked, I was doing some other shit. Even when I got to my regular duty station, like, I wasn't like never the soldier that was like troublesome. I just knew that this was like, I knew this shit was a job. Yeah. I never tried to make that shit a career in my life. Like I knew like my end game was like to get the fuck on. Yeah. Cause I was like, I knew like if they would have called me young and maybe showed me a more better, better side, I would have stayed in on mm. But I didn't see that shit. Like I came to this motherfucker. And when I came to Fort Hood, like I seen all the gangsters, they was here. All the gangsters and gang members was here. It was like, oh, they just in uniforms. Fuck it. Oh, shit. Okay. And then when I realized, like, oh, mm. and then you know how you go somewhere. And then, you know, y'all, you see me on social media. Shit, I go home. Yeah. I'm a Chicago nigga. Yeah. Like, I go to the crib. Mm -hmm. I go home. So when I got out here and I seen just like, oh, you know how you go. Like, how when Crips go from somewhere else from Cali and they yeah. go somewhere else, they be like, Oh, oh, yeah. Yeah. That's how it was for me. Like, I'm going to take this shit over type shit. Yeah, I was like, oh, I'm going to be great down here. Yeah. I'm going to fit right the fuck in. Mm -hmm. hey. And that's how it worked. No bullshit. Like, so I just stayed out here, had my kids. I got buried at one point. All this shit. Oh, kids, shit. don't get married. Don't do it. Don't do it. Wait. Wait till you're old enough. Nah. Wait till you're old enough. I, I would have never knew all that shit. That's crazy. Yeah. I got it, man. Somebody told me I need to write a book. Yeah, yeah. Or <laughs> have a movie about it. Somebody yourself. told me I need to write a book. Yeah, People tell me all the time they really like get a chance. And then what be funny as fuck is they'll be like, um, motherfuckers will be like, well, that me, my family, or whatever the case is, or my friends. And they have my friends out to tell them, like, nah, he can bullshit. He for real. Like, that shit for real. This nigga not making this shit up. And I try not to. I be like, yo. I try to be just authentic as possible with music, anything I do, especially with NQA. Because, man, niggas ain't going to fuck with you if you fake. Mm -hmm. You ain't authentic. And I think that's the smash stroke of what I do, too. Young niggas fuck with me because, like, I, they can relate to me. They can relate. They fuck with me. Like, I ain't coming like the old nigga. Like, yeah, mm -hmm. young nigga, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Change your shit up type shit. Yeah, I ain't trying to. I don't be hating on these young niggas. I don't be trying to make them feel inadequate mm -hmm. unless they for trying to find a footing, you know what I'm saying? I don't make these niggas like, cause we we was the old young niggas that was telling them OG niggas, fuck you niggas, y'all stuck in the 80s. Mm. We ain't give a, so I understand that energy. Like, who are you niggas, we out here getting it like y'all. Who is you niggas to tell us, we ain't shit, we ain't about shit. Like, ain't about pride, it's yeah. just identity. It's, it's like identity. the same type of shit, like, when, we, when you get older, you start not liking the new shit or whatever. Yeah. Yeah. It's just what that is. And even, I can just say like, I ain't a fan of all the new shit, but I fuck with the young niggas. I understand, like y'all just y'all just want representation. Yeah. Y'all got y'all got y'all out here scamming. 
Y'all got fast clothes. Y'all got fast money. Mm -hmm. Y'all got hundred round drums and switches. Y'all yeah, smoking right. weed. Yeah. Y'all getting the baddest hoes. Y'all just want to be heard. Life a lot. Life, life is a lot faster for a sixteen year old than it was yeah. when I was sixteen. True, true. Don't get me wrong. Yeah. I was I was doing some whole nother other shit. But these niggas is getting apartments and shit, starting families and shit. My little cousin, seventeen, engaged with a baby, got a car and a crib. You know what I'm saying? All off hustling. Yeah. Wow. And that's just a whole different. That's an ill ass dynamic. Mm -hmm. That's an ill. That's in the hood. That's a success story. Yeah. That's fucked up. True. That's a fuck. That's fucked up, right? Mm -hmm. But that's that's a success story. And that's, that's that's a success story coming from a nigga that got two drug addicted parents mm -hmm. and one died of a heroin overdose. You know what I'm saying? He he the man. Yeah. But he's 17. It was crazy. I love my cousin to death. He already done had three attempts on his life. He probably won't even yeah. make it to C25. Damn, bro. And that's the cold reality of that shit. And there's young niggas like that everywhere. So who are we in the positions we are? To tell them that. You ain't no shit, young nigga. Yeah, yeah. They taking more risk than the average man is for their family. You know what I'm saying? They they risking it every day. They on the block. Hey, whatever they doing, they risking it every day. One of my little homies, 30, rest in peace. He got killed just selling a gun to a nigga. He wasn't even on bullshit. Nigga was just scared of him and killed him. Three days before he had his son, he was going to sell a he was going to sell a gun. Quick, eight hundred dollars. Nigga popped him, killed him three days before he had his son. His first child. Died 19 years old, shorty known, fear. Go look him up on YouTube, just documentaries on him. Mm. From my hood, my okay. young nigga. Okay. Pictures of him and all that on my Instagram. What, what, what hood? I'm, I'm, uh, Wentworth Gardens, okay. Murder Town. You can okay. look it up. Okay. And shit, he, he got killed, 19. Real shit. And that's the irony, that's just the irony of these little niggas, they don't, they don't see past nothing else because we don't even show them. We don't even tell them. A lot of niggas don't tell them. A lot of niggas don't take the time out to actually just tell them, like, man, like, I don't tell none of these niggas, like, bro, I just tell them, when you pick that gun up, no one come with it. Mm. But I don't never try to make them feel inadequate for making the choices they got to make. They already got niggas doing that. They already got motherfuckers, like, life we choose come from lack of options sometimes. Mm. So who are we to tell these young niggas what they doing and what they making ain't about shit? I fuck with this. All right. Now, is there like any, like, what's the, you got any uh, artists right now that you fucking with? Yeah, I do, actually. Right, well, I'll let you do your thing. Hold on. I'm going to yeah, let you do your thing. You need me to cut this off? Nah, you good. Okay. Boy, making no money deals, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. <laughs> uh, they need the free Key VD. Man. Fuck no. <sighs> Dumbass. He, he did that to himself. Mm -hmm. yeah. The dumb fuck it's talking. Terrible. Hell no. The dumb fuck thought he had immunity. Yeah, he was just talking. He was talking a lot. Talking too, too much. much. Too, too much. much. Too, yeah, too much. And it bit him in the ass. Mm. Glad they do nothing wrong. You got on there thinking you had immunity for some shit you got away with in LA. Mm. Yeah, motherfuckers, you know I'm gonna tell you some yeah, real I shit. Like, but, mm. I'm gonna tell you some real shit. I'm gonna tell you some like, real shit on my life, man. What they do I put this on my life. kids. And it's real as it get, bro. And it's real as it get. It, it's It's. Niggas don't know what government guidelines mean, bro. A lot of niggas don't know what that mean. Like, I went to the feds for 18 months. A lot of niggas don't know what that mean. You can be some shit on the state level. You can be, like, some shit on the All city level. Yep. And they don't know niggas don't know about dual sovereignty. That shit is real. Evidence that don't got to be bought up in the state. Can be brought up in the federal. Oh damn! So all they did, all all they all they did when niggas fail to realize, Tupac State, his family member, his mama kept going to the Supreme Court. Yeah. All they did was get get the shit overturned by the Supreme Court and bought Las Vegas and, and made Las Vegas get back and open up the case. Wow. That's it. So once the feds, once Supreme Court, that's the feds. Once they rule, all moved, evidence is open. And he moved back to Vegas. And he so. moved back to Vegas. Yeah. This ain't. This is just the beginning. Uh, this is, this is the, the, the Vegas just got arms around them. The feds gonna try this case. Yeah. Damn. You talking about a whole conspiracy, and then if they talking about the way it went, really? Yeah. That's across us. That's a lot of shit that went into that. You know, the, the behind the scenes shit? Yeah, right, the, Eric Von Zip, the nigga from Harlem that supposedly the paid P. the Diddy. niggas. P. Diddy. The Southside Cribs that went, went to Harlem to get the gun from the nigga and oh, all that shit. shit. So that's, a, that's federal, but Wolf. it's a lot of niggas that's dead. Wolf and Wolf. Yeah. Wolf, yeah, Wolf yeah. killed Jake Yeah. A lot of niggas don't know that. 
The East Coast started the East Coast West Coast war. Yeah, they did shot that nigga in Atlanta. Shot that nigga in Atlanta. Okay, I heard that before. Yeah, that's the, that's the, that's one of the, but that's the, one of the street stories Same that nigga a lot that of niggas don't know. Ass. Mm -hmm. Same nigga that shot me in the ass, mm -hmm. pub bodyguard. But he was a known nigga from New York. He was a known nigga. My pops used to run with that nigga. Wow. He was a known nigga. Wolf was like that. Mm -hmm. Wolf was like that. He really was. Really was. All right. Brooklyn nigga, hard. Yeah. Brooklyn, all them nigga tough. But it's like shit. It's niggas like you everywhere. And that's one thing I keep in mind. Like when I go places with my artists, when I go out of town, all that, I, I love the fact that I get love and I go to other places. But I always keep in mind, it's niggas. Like me, yeah, what? Mm -hmm. But then again, I got the big meat effect. It's some shit he said, and I love that shit. Me as a black man, I feel like I should be able to go to no ghetto. I should, I feel like I shouldn't be able to, I should be able to go to any ghetto, mm -hmm. any place. Like I, if I'm coming in peace, I ain't coming on no bullshit. If I'm coming offering opportunity, I'm yeah. coming offering peace. Why they know why I can't go to just link with other black niggas? Like I'm that nigga. Niggas know for a fact. I'm the nigga that go to places by myself. Mm -hmm. I go dolo and it be like shit. Take me to your leader. <laughs> That's the nigga I am. Respect. Take me to your leader. I want to talk to the big homie. I don't know other shit. I just want to see what's up. I, I, I'm pulling up. I'm pulling out woods. I'm pulling out the zip. We yeah. smoking. We getting high. Yeah. I went to Cali. Me and my BM. Yeah, I went to Crenshaw. Me and her Dolo by oh, myself. Shit. Went to the shit. donut shop. No. Shell gas station. No. Smoking. Kicking it. Mm -hmm. Dolo with the Crips. I let. Okay. I'm going to Rosecrans, Bullets, Bloods. I let. Because I want to see. I want to touch. I want to feel it. I want to be like, you can't say you this and you that, and you ain't around it. Okay. And I ain't nobody famous. I'm yeah, just yeah, a normal yeah. nigga. I'm just a, nigga. Man that, I'm just a man of experience. Okay. So that's my thing. So it's like, ain't no. I feel like as a black man, ain't no ghetto you should be able to go to. You come in peace and you offer opportunity to okay. niggas, there should be no way you should be able to go. Man, you, me and you one and the same. The father and the son and the brother is one and the same. All is one. Okay. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, I fuck with that. So why, why, why I can't link up with you and just be a normal nigga? That's the problem. The biggest problem with both most black men, most niggas, niggas can't communicate, bro. Mm -hmm. Niggas first thing a nigga see a nigga, the first thing they do is mug a nigga down. They look at a nigga crazy. I ain't gonna lie. I know I got a distinct look to me, and people look at me and be like, yeah, that nigga look woo woo. But I do my best to what's up, bro. Yeah. Even if it's just be inviting and shit. Yeah, I try to yeah. as much as possible. What's up, fam? Yeah. Hey, what's good, bro? I never try to make a nigga feel out of place. When you look, oh, what's up, nigga? Nah, you are already facing that adversity in the world. You are already going through that. So why that. Did, a nigga look like you? I'm giving that to you too for nothing. Yeah, that make you mad too. That make you want to clutch too. Yeah, I respect that. My bitch cheating on me with a nigga. I don't know if you're trying to be funny. There's so many things that mm -hmm. we just go through as black men, and we don't we don't identify that with the other black brothers. So we treat each other hostile. We don't know how to communicate with each other. Bump into a nigga. Fuck you want to do, bitch ass nigga? All right, bro, my bad. You know what I mean? Niggas bumping to me. Like, man, bro, ooh, I'm sorry, bro. Yeah. All right, man, you have a nice one, bro. You good, fam. Man, yeah. All that. Keep your head up, bro. It don't cost nothing to pay a nigga no mind. Right. Real shit. When we talk about artists, I'm in this process of looking for artists okay. right now. Looking for artists. Uh, I got projects dropping for Katie Nelly, Rico 3D, Trap Baby. Um... Double finna drop again. I'm finna get ready to do another playlist. We got another showcase coming up. Okay. First I'll week in November. Mm -hmm. It's gonna be Broad for it all part two. Okay. Cause it's gonna be it's the, the champ is TME Glock. Shout out to TME Glock. He won the last one. So that's the mm -hmm. champ. So somebody gotta knock him off. So that was a good event. Hopefully y'all can come out yeah, to that. Y'all got two. You, what day you say it was? November what'd you say? I think we got something else we're gonna do that day too. So we can, we can do that. I think so. See the thing is Yeah, it's the first week of November. Okay. Yeah, we can do that. The first week of November. <laughs> that first week. Yeah. The fourth. I think that's the fourth. Fourth. First week. Yeah. First week. We can do that. Yeah. I went to the first three. Yeah, man. I love I love being able to just, you know what I'm saying? Oh, yeah, he was there. Talk to me. Was there. I had to realign some shit. As far as like getting back to like what I love. Because for a minute, I, I fell out of love with the music. I fell out of love with the shit. I stopped liking it. Okay. For a while. I was like, fuck a studio, all that shit. Like, I promote, I do the business in. But I'm like, now I'm back focused on, like, I love the music. Like, and it oh, happens man. to the best of us. Yeah, yeah. It happens yeah. to all of us. Like, do we real artists, though? Everybody. Like, everybody. Mm -hmm. It happens to the, all of us. Like, all of us. All of us. And the hardest thing, like, it can happen to me, but I think it's more harder, like, hmm. 
and inspiring other people to keep going when you don't even have it. That's the hard part. That's the hard part of what I do, honestly. That's the hard part for me. Like some days I don't want to do this shit. I seen you say something about that. Like you gotta, you gotta want it more than the artists. Type you gotta shit. want it more than them. Cause man, I ain't gonna lie, and it's no disrespect. The average artist be lazy as fuck. Especially, especially the one that feel like they already got an uber complex about themselves. Hmm. Like them, the ones that like be super talented mm -hmm. and know they talented, mm -hmm. so they think everything's supposed to be handed to them. And a lot of artists, what they do is they expect shit to be like free. Yeah, like, I'm talented. I'm dope. You should fuck with me. Mm -hmm. And it's like you don't know what the fuck I had to do to get in this position to even offer this shit to you. True. Like I tell people all the time, ain't no ain't no manual to this shit. Ain't no manual. Ain't no manual, ain't no music manual to this shit. Ain't no manual. There's no fucking manual at all. Like, that's the worst thing about this shit ever. Mm. You gonna learn this shit trial by error. You can't buy your way in the game. Mm. You can't do none of that. You can't buy your way in the game. Mm. That shit over with. Like, you think you gonna pay to buy some shit? Not <laughs> happening. They not giving you a half a million dollars for you to be fake. They don't want to see you with chains rapping with the same little niggas. They don't want that. Bad they they want to see you working with people that got motion just like you do, supposedly. They want to see you work with other great artists, at least B-list features. Yeah, they want to see I, you. Okay. With, they want to see you with mm. content. They mm. want to see you with vlogs. Yeah. They want to know why am I giving you a half a million dollars and offering you all my resources: Saturday Night Live, TV shows, Nickelodeon, NBA shit, all these endorsements and possibilities. Why would we put you in this position as a label, and you have nothing to you? Mm. All you got is some cool videos, some jewelry, some money. And the worst thing you can do is show a label you got money. Because then they don't want to give you a deal. They want to be your partner. Mm -hmm. well, they want to make you equally liable. You uh, know what I'm talking about. Mm -hmm. And that fucks shit up. So it's a tricky, tricky fucking game. Mm -hmm. It's a tricky fucking game. You show them niggas you got money, then they pushing you harder to show them why they should give you a deal. If it makes sense. I know. Damn. You blowing. That's some mind blowing shit right there. Yeah. Like if you, you, you walk or you act like you got a quarter million, they're going to expect you to, they're going to expect you to move like you got a quarter million. Then if you walk in there and they're like, oh. They're they, they, they not even going to expect you to take the first contract they give you. Nope. They're going to bluff you. They're going to bluff you. Niggas don't mm -hmm. understand. Most labels bluff you first. Okay. They'll give you a shit contract on purpose to make you read it and go take it back. Uh, I seen Lil Russell, some shit with him. He had that shit happen from a, uh, Rock Nation, I think. Yeah, they, like they send you a bluff. Yeah, niggas will send you a bluff see contract just to see if you gonna sign it. They know they know it's disrespectful. It's mm. Fuck. Mm. But mm. they you you came in there like you got money. We so if you got money, this is disrespectful to you. Yeah. If you're a nigga that ain't got money, you gonna take that. Now, if you do got money and you just really want the opportunity, sure. But we doubt nine out of ten with a nigga going that far. They want the money, man. Yeah, yeah. They want the money. That's true. So let let the artists know. I mean, you see, you gave them plenty of gems and jewels in this hoe. So just give like, if you could tell an artist in like a couple sentences, what how they should uh for their get their uh their name in the game. What would you tell them? Be original. Hmm. Okay, I like that. Be solid. Hmm. Um, be creative and be humble. Be humble. When I, when I say be humble, I mean that like so many different ways. Like, be humble. Be humble. Like, be humble. Be humble and realize the work you got to put in. Be humble and realize the sacrifice. Be humble and realize you're going to lose. Mm -hmm. Be humble and realize you're going to win. Mm -hmm. Be humble and realize you're going to take steps back. Be humble and realize you're going to take steps forward. Be humble. That's the biggest thing I can give you. You're going to feel every emotion with this shit. You're going to go through every emotion with this shit. And you're going to go through every emotion. I felt every emotion with this shit. I've been happy, down, up, around, all over. The main thing I can tell any artist is just keep going. Don't stop. Do not stop. Don't quit. If it's really what you love, believe, invest in it. Believe in it. Hmm. Don't make everything a money grab. Don't do everything for the dollar value. I, like, I didn't do everything in the beginning for the dollar value. I learned. 
Mm-hmm. I didn't get paid my first internship when I worked with Rising Star Group. I didn't learn. I didn't. I didn't do that shit. I didn't. Look, I didn't get paid when I was carrying crates for Kushu Conflict and do it die. Oh shit! I, I just was. I wanted to learn. I mm-hmm. wanted to be a DJ. Mm-hmm. I wanted to, to be, be around the game. I wanted to be around the game. I was a kid. This shit don't come overnight. The check don't come right then and there. Yeah. I respect that. Well, shit, you know what I'm saying? We gonna wrap this thing up, but uh, if you wanna drop any of your socials, if you wanna drop all any, them things. My yeah. favorite part of this, this yeah, boy. Yeah, yeah. Man, with fuck it. it. Let my nigga talk a little bit. No Tell me who you is, you know what I'm saying? NQL Cartel J. Head of security. <laughs> Level three. CEO. JNC Security, doing private venues, anything of the sort. Just get at me on my Instagram. We can do business. All right. Shouts out to NQA ladies, Dej, Libby, Lacey, Lacey, Lacey. Shout out to all the artists, Rico. Shout out to my boys, Juwan B, Trey, Dollar, Tom, man, Jose, my boy, Partner. What's up? Everybody, man, like shit, we got shit coming. Stay tuned, keep watching. I was glad to come drop through some good shit. We're always yeah, yeah. going live. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah you, dropped some, you dropped that shit. Yeah. Yeah. I, yeah. I hope y'all learned something from my interview. I really like, I, and you know what would be crazy? When people finally interview me or talk to me, they'd be like, yo, I didn't know you was that cool, yeah, nigga. for real, though. I didn't know you was that cool. No, I knew. I knew. Yeah, I could tell, yeah. bruh. So, yeah, yeah. I mean, it's just glad to put the face to the name. Yeah, you know yeah. what I'm saying? Really you dropping that shit, so, though. Yeah, yeah, man. It was just. Stay tuned, man. Big Gang 039 on uh, Instagram. Mm-hmm. Caddy Fogna on Facebook. Man, everything at the same place. Like I say, catch me when I'm catchable. Sometimes you, sometimes me. Always us. Always one. Peace and love. Power cycle divine. Peace, God. Y'all have a nice one. Hey.